All right, so we've looked at just a few examples of how you can use typography in your P5.js projects. Um, typography is this amazingly rich field, um, super technical, really long history, and we're doing a total disservice uh, by only touching on a tiny, tiny part of what's possible. But I think the intersection of fields um, that normally don't involve computation, and computation is really, really cool and fertile for exploration, and typography, I think, is, the, is a really great example where you can really push what's possible with these um, tools that we have to make some really cool, unique, and new kinds of things. So your assignment is to explore typography in an interactive way. So um, the, the basic idea is you're going to pick a brand, and this is a really broad definition of what brand might be, um, and you're going to create an inter a project that focuses on typography that's interactive. Um, and the idea is this will be the landing page for their website, and it will provide this cool interactive experience for visitors. Um, a couple other details we'll come back to. Um, I love this quote um, from Kimura Kyo. I'm sorry, I'm totally saying that wrong. Um, every, uh, everything written uh, symbols can say has already passed by. They are like tracks left by animals. <laughs> this like really tickles my brain. Um, so this is a two-week project, and the idea is that you, yes, you're going to make this landing page with interactive typography. Um, we're going to do a series of projects that take on different contexts where you might do um, uh, programming projects. So this one is very client driven. Others will be more um, like a fine arts focus, but hopefully it then applies some of the things we learned in Creative Programming 1 towards more, I, I hesitate to use the word real world, but projects that um, give you a sense of what you might be able to do with, with these skills. Um, so you're going to be thinking about client-based stuff, but I really do want to encourage you to wildly and creatively experiment just because, um, you know, that they're kind of a staid or conservative looking um, brand doesn't mean that you can't really push, or even if they're kind of like wild and out there, you could push it even further. Um, the goal really is to make something engaging and awesome, and the choice of brand is wide open. So it can be a real company for sure, but it could be a fictional one from film, TV, comics, whatever. Um, it could be an organization. So you could do NATO or Doctors Without Borders or something like that, um, or it could be a person. So maybe it's a celebrity and you're doing branding for them. Um, so I want to keep it open so you can kind of explore something you're psyched about. Um, so typography and that interactive part is really the key focus. I want you to think about fun, creative, experimental, and weird and engaging ways of playing with letters, their shapes, words, all that kind of stuff. And some of the questions that I think you're going to need to ask are um, what fonts best suit your project? What kinds of visuals and interactives um, interactions best suit the brand that you're working with? Um, should the colors be muted and geometric or cartoony and bright? Um, the typography is really the central part of this project, but feel free to add things that make it engaging. Um, and you can definitely make assets for your piece as well. This is another example where other skills intersecting with computation are really cool. So if you want to draw stuff, maybe an illustrator or um, do sound design and then bring that in as an element, you could totally do that. That'd be really cool. Um, so we're going to walk through kind of step by step how you're going to go about this because it's like, okay, how do I even start? But um, really our core process here is going to be ideation, presentation, and refinement. And this is really common um, iterative development process for client-based based work um, and is, you know, something we've already done, but we're going to do more of in these kinds of projects. Um, so we'll talk more about deliverables um, and some stretch goals. So the first section of this is for you to make um, two things. One is a design brief. Um, the brief is a way of, um, like this is a document that you would give to the client as um, sort of a pitch or as a way of explaining your approach to a project. Now, sometimes you might get a brief from um, from a client and it would be very specific. It might've involved um, like their marketing team and data and all kinds of stuff, and they're very specific about they, what they want. Other times you might get a really vague kind of, here's what we need, and then you put together a brief that explains kind of your approach to the project. And that's how we're going to work here. Um, and you know, sitting down and just trying to make can be really hard. So the idea here is that you're creating a bunch of stuff that will help ground your project. Um, so you're going to make this as a PDF, and they can take a range of forms, these briefs. Um, I've created a template for you here, hopefully to make this a little easier. 
Um, so your brief should at least include the name of the company or the brand that you're working for, a screenshot of their existing homepage so you have some context to look at, and then word lists I think are really helpful here. So a list of at least 10 words that describe who is engaging with this brand, the consumers, users, whoever they are. So think about words that describe that audience. Um, the visual words, so these describe the overall look, feel, and style you're going for. So this might be um, glitchy or geometric or bubbly or um, whatever. Or you could use really weird, you know, weird words here that like don't describe a specific thing but give you an idea like shy or, um, you know, whatever. Uh, motion words, these describe the kinds of motion and interaction that you're after as well. So think about verbs and stuff like that. Then um, font samples. So um, I'd like you to find at least three fonts that um, you think might work for the project. And um, this is really common for all kinds of design projects. Uh, you want to include a sample of the font. Think about what word makes sense for that. Um, the name of the font so you remember. And then um, one to two sentences on why it fits with the project. Again, trying to like put into words why you're making visual decisions. And then a similar thing with color schemes. So finding at least three different color schemes. Um, these can be just little swatches of color next to each other that, um, and a note about why you've chosen them. So um, these can be variations of each other if you feel like you've got kind of a good idea, or you could experiment and think about how these things are gonna go together. Um, of course, you can add lots more stuff to your brief. So um, some examples that you're optional would be what font the company uses. A Google search can often find that information. Um, uh, an image of the current logo or word mark, a word mark of the logo with the name of the organization next to it. Um, and ideally, this would be in vector format like SVG. That would allow you to load it into P5.js and do cool stuff with it. Um, but that, you know, that's optional. If you can find their mission statement for this brand, that can be really helpful too. Um, and most places will have it. If you look in an about page, you should be able to find something like that. And then anything else that you think might be helpful. So a mood board, which is a collection of images that you grab that just relate to the overall feel and inspiration you're looking for, the competition of the brand, sample products that they offer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can make this in Word or Illustrator or whatever, uh, export it as a PDF. Um, and then that way it's like a, a shareable document. Now, normally um, for a client project, you'd wanna spend a lot of time designing this to look really well. This is your first connection you make with them. It's a way of showing them that you're legit and you're ready to do this job. Um, you know, so for this assignment, you might wanna put some energy into really practicing that. It, this is not a design class, so you know, maybe that's out of the scope of what you feel comfortable with, but it's good, I think, to do some practice with that. Um, and then the other thing is your next step will be to make some sketches in code that um, don't try to take on the complicated parts yet, but just are like proof of concept. So please don't dig too deep into the tech stuff yet. Um, I really want you to focus on just getting kind of a, almost like a really rough version of the thing that we can look at and talk about. The next step after this is all done, we'll do a round of feedback and then you're going to be doing a final version. Um, it should run full screen. So it should certainly stretch to the width. I'll leave it up to you whether you want, or I have this cat trying to um, make his way over here. Uh, hi buddy. Um, he might peek his head out. So then you're gonna make this final version that um, should fill the screen at least full width. You can decide whether you want it to be always the same height or whether you want it to shrink and expand. Uh, but again, that's this idea of responsive design that it's gonna be on different screens um, and you're gonna finish that up. So I have a lot of inspiration to share with you because I think there's some really cool things. Um, I'm gonna show you a bunch of images and talk briefly about them. If you just wanna follow these links and check them out yourself, you can do that. Um, the first is Dia Studio, and these folks, like I didn't even pick one because they just do some amazing, cool work. Um, they are definitely at the intersection of code and um, typography and are doing some really fun stuff. Um, actually, I, don't, I haven't seen this project before. I just picked something kind of at random. This is pretty cool. Um, this looks pretty analog, though I'm, I'm betting there's some code stuff going on here, but they just do some really fun experimental, neat looking stuff. I probably should have pulled something up at a time for y'all, but that's okay. Yeah, super freaky, weird, cool looking stuff. Um, the next project, I don't have these in any particular order. 
Um, this is called The Moment. Now you're not gonna be hearing any audio here. Um, some of these projects have audio, but this is this really big installation. Let's zip ahead a little bit. Actually, I think, here we go. So this section in particular, I thought was really related. So this is a huge room scale projection and you're seeing these letter forms that are like turning and dissolving and being animated. And um, I don't remember the exact details here, but I just think the um, effect is really subtle, but really cool. And you can see how just playing with the shapes of letters really transforms them um, in cool ways. Um, yeah, and this is a project by, um, Hyun Ju Song and Mi Leong Bei. The next project, this is by um, uh, Julian Schroffer and Lust, who we'll look at some more of stuff by Lust in a sec. This is really cool. Another big installation where you see, and I included this um, interview because you might want to read more about the piece. Um, this was at the Schaderlijk Museum in the Netherlands. And unfortunately, I can't make it bigger for you, but, or just jump ahead, but it's this. Um, cool sort of like grid of text. I think it's meant to evoke like the old typography um, boxes where like lead type was stored. This piece is sort of moving and flowing. Again, room scale, huge projections, really kind of fun, cool stuff. And there's sound going right now, which you can't hear, but. Um, and Lust in general does some really cool stuff. Unfortunately, it looks like they are um, no longer, but they um, do some really rad, let's see, I wanted to show you. I mean, their website itself is pretty cool. So they like generate fonts using code that they can then export and work with. Um, just trying to see what else do they have here. Text made with other text. So, um, you know, they're a design studio doing really cool stuff for a range of clients. Um, but this is like really fun, experimental, cool kinds of stuff. I really love this. Um, this is a project by um, Ingo Italic, though I think that is a um, pseudonym. I'm not really sure who the person behind this is, um, but this is this cool projected sort of like interpolated letters. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on here, but it's pretty cool. So it's taking the geometry of the letters and then um, uh, twisting and distorting them or morphing them one into another. So it's not readable in the sense of a normal letter, though sometimes we can see a hint of like an R maybe or something, um, but this is pretty cool. And I like the projection onto this concrete wall too. So like texture being an element here. And um, this is from that same, I think this is like a workshop. Um, so this is Tina Lemkul. And it's just a bunch of these little Simple animations. I don't think this is done with code, um, but I love the range of like experiments and like the feel of this is clearly really different than the last example where this is really colorful and playful and noodly or you know whatever. Pretty fun. Um, this is a trailer for a workshop by Amnon Oed, and I have in the assignment also a link to the code for this. Um, but I thought the trailer was cool. I mean, you can't hear it, but it's very loud. I'm just gonna play this trailer for you all because I think there's a bunch of cool examples. This is really just like exploring the range of possibilities. So this is a three-dimensional letter form. This like hair growing out of it. This is all made in processing. Um, let's see, we can jump ahead a little bit. I thought there was more, here we go. So like flowing and waves and um, using points that like then mutate and create these new shapes are pretty cool. Um, you know, most of the stuff we've covered already, except for the 3D, you could do kind of with this. I have no idea how this is working, but it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, just like distorting or using this data to make new stuff, it's really fun. More 3D, um, 3D and P5JS is totally doable. 3D in the browser is totally doable. It's this whole other complicated world. Um, but you can see the results here are really cool to see. Um, so you can check out those examples. Um, they don't all run in the contemporary version of processing, but you can check that out. Um, this is another workshop um, by Tim Roden Broker. Hopefully I'm saying that right, um, called Type Machines. And um, this also has a trailer, which is kind of fun. Thought I'd play some of this for you. 
Um, unfortunately, you can't access the stuff behind this. You do have to pay for that. But I thought there were some cool, you know, it's quick edits, but some cool stuff just showing like patterns. I love the black and white color scheme on these two. Just like um, it makes the these fit together, even though they're really different. Um, really cool layers, motion, feedback, stuff like that. And you can't see it, but there's a cat right here who's like lying down on my keyboard. Um, and Tim Rodenbrook also has a really great Instagram. Following folks like this can be a really great way of finding um, new artists and inspiration and stuff like that. His Instagram's really fun. Lots of cool experiments and stuff like that. Um, this is, let me double check. I think this is Peter Cho. Yep. Um, this is by Peter Cho. These are, again, are like little experiments. Um, but these I think are really fun. And this is pretty old, it's from 2002. Um, but again, I just love these like little explorations of letters and seeing what happens when we interact with them. He's also got this cool project called Veronoi type. Uh, Veronoi is this kind of classic algorithm that divides space. If you have a bunch of points, it creates kind of like cells between them. And um, here he's experimenting with building typefaces from letters using that, it's pretty cool. Um, this is a bunch of kinetic type experiments um, by Nikita Iziev, uh, who's a designer in London doing really cool stuff. Again, I don't know how these are made. I think maybe After Effects or something, but um, they're pretty, pretty rad. And I love just like the weirdness of them. It's really cool. The like mushy morphiness. It's really fun. So some of these would be very challenging to make in processing. Others, you know, you might be able to think about ways of kind of accomplishing. But again, I also love the depth of exploration here. It's really cool. And uh, her Instagram as well is really, really great. I definitely recommend checking it out. Um, she does some really cool stuff. Next up is um, two projects by Sagmeister and Walsh. Um, these are projects were done um, by Stefan Sagmeister and Jessica Walsh. Now um, she's left to start her own agency. But um, these are both around the theme of beauty. And um, the, their firm, there's a lot more people involved than just them, but they do these really huge, complex, multi-part design projects. And this is this big installation around the idea of beauty. And you can see typography being really key here. So it's installed in a gallery setting, but they are um, trained as designers. So you can see, you know, like language and typography is really key here. Um, and I just love the range of exploration happening of typography. So they've got these like custom apps and wallpaper and books and posters and ephemera and um, letters really being kind of a key part of this whole thing, along with a lot of other stuff, this beautiful B shadows. I mean, there's so much here. And then this is a um, kind of offshoot of that, I guess. It includes a whole bunch of these animations. These are all in 3D. Um, but I love, again, they're just like really exploring letters and um, in this case, these physics and stuff is really cool. The color is gorgeous. Um, yeah, just a whole bunch of stuff here, really cool. Totally different kind of project. Um, this is by an artist named Eduardo Koch, um, who is known for doing um, bio art, so art with biology. Um, and I saw this, and sadly, there's not very many good images, but I saw this installation um, when I was an undergraduate student in Minneapolis um, a bunch of years ago now. This is like early 2000s, um, and it really blew my mind. So the brief explanation, as I understand it, is you have a text on the right, which is um, from the Old Testament, and it's something along the lines of, let man have dominion over the animals of the earth and the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, something like that. Um, then on the back wall, which you can't see, it's been translated to Morse code. Then on the uh, left-hand wall over here is it in um, genetic sequence. Then he's gone into the lab and actually encoded that sequence into bacteria, which are present in the gallery in that pedestal. Um, and you're seeing the Petri dish projected on the wall. The bacteria are um, susceptible to ultraviolet light. And when they um, get ultraviolet light, they they mutate. And so what happens is this word of God gets transformed into these living creatures, which then get um, mutated and the word, the, the text changes. And not only that, the, the UV light is connected to the internet. Anyone can log in and turn it on or off. You can be God and you can literally transform this organism 
and this uh, religious text at the same time. So like crazy, totally blew my mind when I saw it. I really love this piece. Uh, yeah, like I said, there's no order here. Um, this is uh, by Karina Klassen. This is some cool rasterized type. So just experimenting with degrading the letters and then it's um, coming out as these like uh, books or pamphlets, which is pretty fun. Um, from the same, I think this is also from a workshop. This is by Steph Stephanie Schwartz. Um, so just sort of like uh, identifying points in those uh, text and then growing these shapes out from them and really experimenting with um, density and what happened, you know, legibility, really fun. And then I love like this poster comes out of it and some other stuff. So really like using this as a tool along the way to make other stuff. Uh, similar, this is another variation, I think going around the letters, also really fun, and a bunch of outputs. Um, you're hearing my cat try to eat plastic right now. It's his favorite food. Um, hey, buddy, you don't need to do that right now, do you? He does. Um, let's see, some other stuff. Um, I'm not sure who this is by. I found a bunch of the stuff on this awards website. It's cool, morphing text. Here's another one. This is for this project, Genes for Refugees. I have a link to the project where you can go check it out. Um, and this other one, Bruno Tome, Tome, also cool. You know, you could imagine how you might do something like this in P5.js. Um, this is um, also by the, I think by a similar person. No, this is someone else, sorry. This is, um, uh, what is their name? I'm so sorry, I don't remember. Uh, Andre Bernier. Really cool, and um, I love this liquid one. It's interactive, just like type moving around. This would be complicated to program, but pretty fun. And their um, Instagram is also really rad. There's tons of really cool trippy stuff here. Um, some historical examples. So these are not using code. This is from um, a genre of poetry called concrete poetry. Um, and these are by BP Nickel made in the 1960s. So these are printed. And Concrete Poetry is interested in how to use letter forms, not just the text itself, but letter forms, their placement and composition to be part of the poetry. Um, and I just love these like constellations of letter shapes. And here's another one. I think this is called Love. Um, this is a contemporary project by Emma Winston um, for National Novel Generation Month, which is this cool project. Um, and so she has generated this zine that you can view online. You can also download it and print it. And it's got um, these kind of like l words turning into these um, compositions. And then um, the last sort of, oh no, I have a few more. Um, this is from uh, 1918 by uh, Guillaume Apollinaire. And um, these are calligrams. So these are um, these similar kind of idea to concrete poetry, generating shapes with text. I really love these. Um, in some way, because I don't read French, I don't know what they say, and I kind of like that even more. Um, they become really interesting. This is a project um, by, I uh, don't know, Jörg uh, Peeringer. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, this is an early app for the iPhone it's from 2010, um, where these letters bounce around on screen, and it's pretty fun. There's sound involved, rhythms, and that sort of thing. It's pretty cool. Project by Golan Levin and Zach Lieberman, um, generating letters and then using um, computer vision and motion tracking to kind of control this as an installation. It's also really cool. So your shadow affects the um, these letters as they float around in these shapes. It's pretty fun. I think you could speak into it. This is from a series of works that they did. It's pretty fun. So you can see some words and other stuff. Um, this is called Zero and One by, I'm trying to remember now, sorry, I can't remember. Um, it's in the, in the thing. Another just set of really cool, I thought simple, but effective. Um, oh, sorry, this is by C.C. Ehrlich. Um, explorations, of sort of distorting or breaking apart letter forms. Some of these are still, some of these are animated. I uh, really love these. This is cool. You could imagine this tracking to your mouse position. Um, some more projects by Cecilia Ehrlich. I don't know what butter people means, but I think this is pretty cool. Um, this like super trippy. This is literally called cool. 
Another one, this, I think you could definitely imagine how to do in P5.js. Um, this is a project from 19, uh, late 80s by um, Vera Molnar, pioneer of computer art, writing, doing art with code, called Letters from My Mother. I don't remember the details, but it's somehow based on these letters that her mother wrote, and then she wrote code that generates new ones. These are shown as prints, um, also with hand drawing involved with them. Um, I just discovered this project this week, so I wanted to add it. Um, this is by Zhang Zhan. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong too. On the platform Sedition, that is, um, they sell digital artworks. Um, so, but luckily you can watch them. Um, this runs normally as software on your computer, not as a video, but it's these symbols, these traditional symbols um, that are then sort of like turned into points and they morph into each other, which is pretty cool. Very quiet, you know, different kind of feel. And then a couple other things I wanted to share with you. Um, this beautiful book from 1700 of um, choreographic notation. So this is not language in the sense of words, but certainly it is a language and forming these really cool, beautiful shapes that have meaning um, beyond just their symbols. Um, and I don't know, to me, they suggest motion and some really, well, I mean, they literally are, right? Um, I think these are really cool. Um, and then uh, two other things. One is the future of typography is getting really, really interesting. You could certainly go down a long rabbit hole. I want to share this one article with you on variable fonts, something that computers allow, which is that um, a font can change dynamically um, rather than have separate, you know, like a, a bold version and an italic version. Um, variable fonts allow them to sort of morph and change. And I think this is the future of typefaces, especially online. So you can read a lot more about that. And then the last thing, if you don't know public domain review, you definitely should waste a lot of time going and checking this out. Um, and this is a whole bunch of typography related projects. They collect stuff, especially from internet archive, from really old books and then put together these collections and they're amazing. So if you're looking for inspiration, I mean, these things are just bananas. Now, not all this is gonna be type only. This is just kind of their raw search, but um, there's some really, really cool stuff you can check out if you're looking for visual inspiration. Okay, that was a lot. Um, there's more down here in the resources as well, places that you could find fonts, some other stuff, um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. Go make some cool interactive projects with typography, and I'm super psyched to see what you make.